cassette number one in the series of tapes of the Waiting on God held in Indianapolis, Indiana, June 22 to 25, 1975. We ask your patience for the poor sound on this first cassette. Somehow the recording of the first session was not up to standards. I believe you'll find that in succeeding cassettes, however, the quality is improved thanks to the contribution of a very fine master recorder from Dear Ones in Tennessee. Individual sermons have been placed on separate cassettes from this Waiting on God in order to facilitate your location of these in your own cassette library. Because of this, sessions continued from one cassette to another will not always be on consecutive cassettes because of intervening message tapes. We trust that you will be sensing the presence of Jesus from these recordings as we sense the presence of the Most Holy God of Heaven during those four days. If for any reason any of your cassettes are unsatisfactory or jam or do not operate correctly or have not been recorded properly, please return them to us immediately and we shall replace them free of charge. Any difficulty with the cassette during the first year, we are able to replace free of cost. So will you please return them if you experience any difficulty with these cassettes. Due to the different amount of tape on separate cassettes, the end of certain sessions may be lost. However, this does not indicate that something is wrong with your tape. It merely indicates that the length of tape on the duplicated cassette was not the same as that of the master tape. And for this we ask your forgiveness. We are trusting, however, that all will be in order and that you will find these most enjoyable. And now with prayer, that your hearts be strengthened and encouraged, we join the, the session on Sunday afternoon, June 22nd, now in progress. You know our incomings, our outgoings, you know the potential, you know all about all of us. And oh, we worship thee, O Holy Ghost. We worship thee. How precious thou art. Thy joy is so sweet and we are so utterly nothing. But oh, you are so ever present. We pray today for wisdom. You said if any man like it, let him ask of God who give it to all men liberal and if they do not, it shall be given him. And we thank thee this morning for thy precious wisdom that is from the bar that says pure, peaceful, gentle, easily treated, full of mercy and good fruit, without partiality and without apostasy. Oh, Jesus, we worship thee, O Holy Ghost, this morning. We love to worship thee. We adore thee, thy sacred word, thy holy word. David said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Oh, Father, as we came to this waiting today, we came just as a child. We came so unworthy, so little, so limited, so utterly nothing as we have come in other years and days. So we come again today confessing that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. We come confessing, Heavenly Father, that you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We come today, Heavenly Father, thankful that you sent Jesus, and Jesus said it's expedient for you that I go. He would send the Comforter, and when he has come, he'll reprove the world of sin, of righteousness, and judgment to come. We thank the Lord Jesus for the reproving of the Holy Spirit, and we need the might of reproving in our world and our nation. We need the Holy Ghost to come as in the days of Pentecost, the days of Wesley, the days of Finney and Jonathan Edwards, when you came with great unction and power until the whole society was smitten with great conviction and walked before us and the byway to the communities until they came to repentance and were transformed and became new creatures. For thou said, if any man be in Christ Jesus, is a new creature, the old things pass away, Lord, and behold, all things will become new. So this morning, Heavenly Father, our heart is thrilled, our soul is thrilled as we were seeing amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Lord, we're so thankful, Lord, for the way that you have given us great satisfying portion, this inner peace and joy. All these that are gathered in here from 15 to 20 states with us are worshiping thee, and we have come for only one reason, that's to love thee, and to wait before thee, knowing that in us there is no good thing, that in our abilities and our plans and our methods and our patterns they're all they're all empty unless you lead them. Unless you direct them to the witness of the Holy Ghost, there's just another meeting. A meeting, just a few words. But Lord, when the Holy Ghost leads, when you lead, someone is helped. 
And I pray anyone that's under the sound of a voice to raise his heart that's sobbing and pounding, I pray that they'll know that's conviction. Amen. That that's the power of the Holy Spirit saying, Repent, give me my, thy heart, my son, my daughter. Turn unto the Lord with all thy heart. Trust him with all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding in all thy ways. Acknowledge him and thy shall direct thy path. You said if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And we are so unworthy of this. We are utterly unworthy. Oh, but we're rejoicing. Oh, we're happy. We're thrilled. We're thrilled. We're at peace. You've given us something within. And so we pray, Father, that thou will be with all those in this building. Because you love everyone here alike. Doesn't make a difference for the peoples that we know or we don't know. You love them just as much as you love us and maybe more. If we have enemies on the earth, you may love them more than us, but we love them too. And we pray for them and for their salvation as well as our own. Remember telling our own daughters when they were little 20 and 30 years ago, it's by thy mercy, it's by the grace of God, the blood of the land, that daddy will be saved and be able to make it in to the celestial city. Jesus, this morning, was so thankful that the Holy Spirit, where the Comforter has come, and he's able to guide us into all truth, because he said in St. John chapter 16, verse 13, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of himself, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will show you things to come. So we're so thankful for the Holy Spirit, Jesus, that he sent into the world to guide us into all truth. Not part truth, some truth, a little truth, beautiful truth, but all truth. And we know that all truth will crucify us, bring us to death. Self-denial and the cross brings us to inner death of our desires and our wants that brings us to glorious life of a joy and a satisfaction that the world cannot find in theologies and ideologies and ideas, but we find it in thee. He said in Matthew 18, 3, except you be converted and become as a child, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. So Jesus, we, we have a great assignment. We realize that we haven't got our assignment too well. But you said if you're going to enter into my kingdom, you have to become as a child after conversion. We know it's one thing to be truly transformed, but it's altogether much more and marvelous to become like a little child. We know it's so sweet and precious to be converted. Lord, I thought when you saved me 42 years ago, there was such light. Oh, I saw that glorious light of thyself above me. And when you came in, there was such peace and joy and rest. I never knew it existed, even though my father and mother had told me about it for almost 17 years, I couldn't hear what they said. And when your joy came in, and oh, it was so wonderful, I wanted everyone in the world to get it, but I couldn't convince too many of it. But I tried to get people saved, and then you taught me that we can't save anybody, only just wait on thee and let thee draw them in. He said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw them into me. And when, oh Lord, you're not just drawn, you don't just be drawn by beautiful preaching and singing and testimony, but you're drawn by a body that's willing to die and go to a cross and carry a cross and be obedient completely until we can become one. One in spirit, one in mind, one in unity. You said one the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And we know, Lord Jesus, this is the urgency of this hour, yes. is that all thy people called by thy name shall humble themselves, pray, turn from their wicked ways, seek thy face, then will I hear from heaven, will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. And we know this morning, Lord Jesus, that your assignment to all of us is to become one, as thou art the Father, and the Son one. And you want all of us one. And that's, what, that's one of the objectives. And that's one of the purposes. That's one of the reasons we're here, is to wait before thee that thee could bring us to oneness in thee. One with each other, until we were like Jesus and the Father, one. Completely one in harmony. Holy harmony. A place of symphony of grace to which you can take each of us as an instrument and play a melody to the world that's lost in discord that they may come to this hiding place. This beautiful place of rest and joy and holy fellowship. We know the fellowship of the saints is like to that above. Lord, and that gets inside my heart just now. Lord, that's so in my heart when I say that. But oh Lord, when you bring us into oneness, there is such joy together, there's such sweetness, there's such rest, such wonderful sweetness. We don't have to have happenings to be happy. We just have thee to be with us, and it's happy anywhere. Whether we're alone, whether we're on the high seas, 
whether we're in the mountains, whether we're in Israel or Germany or England, or whether we're in some parts of the Hawaiian Islands or Jamaica or in Bermuda, or wherever we are in South America or Asia or the Middle East, Lord, if we have thee in our heart, we're happy there. Even in the midst of pain, when we're suffering, we're still happy. In the midst of tests and trials, he causes us to be inwardly happy and restful. Just take peace. Oh, we're grateful to thee for this wonderful love that you've given us today. Oh, we're thrilled. Thank you for this room, this air condition. We're so grateful for the facilities here. We want to take care of the facilities as much better as if they were our very own. Because if we do not take good care of that which is another man's, how can we be entrusted with that which is our own or with the true riches? We pray this morning, Lord Jesus, for the visitation of God, that the people will not see any of us here but see Jesus only. In our cry through the days, weeks, and months, that the people will see thee and not see us, but see Jesus, see the light of Christ. Father, unless they see Jesus, the Christ, it will be a failure. But we thank you today, Lord Jesus, that through the light of the Christ we may be seen in a person or persons. Oh, we are nothing, none of us, but you're everything dwelling in your children. We pray, Father, this morning that the words of our mouth, the meditations of our heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. We remember back in Deuteronomy that the children of Israel said, You ask God. Moses, you ask God what we do, should do and what we should be. And you said to Moses, our Father, you said, Oh, that there were such a heart in them that they would fear me and keep all my commandments always, that it might be well with them and with their children forever. Father, this was out of your heart to Moses, to the children, your chosen people, all those that would follow thee. Oh, that there were such a heart. And as we look in that scripture today, we see that that subjunctive mood meaning so very few. Oh, that there were. It wasn't. It wasn't. Only two men out of 603,000 really believed. Only two men. Only two men had a heart of faith and surrender out of 603,000 the men above the age of 20 years. Oh, that there were such a heart in them that they would fear me and keep all my commandments always that it might be well with them and with their children forever. Well, me and parents, we want our children to be looked after. And we know this is a promise that we would fear you and keep all our commandments. You'll take care of our family. We'll take care of our children if we'll truly give thee the praise, not become prideful or selfish or haughty or self-centered or self-esteeming. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you will accept our thanks for this wonderful way. Jesus, you told the disciple, the apostle of old, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus, thou art the way, thou art the truth, thou art the life. So this morning, we behold thee, the Lamb of God, that taketh away the sins of the world. Jesus, thou art the Christ. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And when he confessed that, he turned and said, Flesh and blood is not revealed this unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And we know this must be the revelation of the Holy Ghost. The true revelation is that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Oh, Father, we've been in churches, we've been in our churches through the years, all of us, but what you want is you want the full, complete dominance of the church. You want the complete predominance in my heart and every one of our hearts so that we may have the leadership, that we will be like thee and not like the patterns of earth. Oh, Jesus, we give you the glory and the honor today for the precious blood of Jesus that's able to save the violence of sinners. We're so thankful that Jesus said if we confess our sins, you're faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Jesus, the one for your precious blood, we would be lost, we'd perish. For so without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. And we became the propitiation for our sins, that we sinners could be saved and become saints. And Lord, we realize today, unless we're a saint here, we'll not be a saint there. And we know thy true saints are persons that love everybody. You said a new commandment I give unto you, that you'll love one another as I have loved you. And by this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you shall have love one for another. So this morning, Father, we're so grateful to thee for this love. We know we're most, most unworthy. Our Father, we've just been talking out of our heart. We, we just have to stop. Because there's no end. There's no end to any one thing you begin. So we're trusting thee today. It will be in divine order. 
I know our room's small here, but maybe in an hour or two or three we'll have more room. We don't know how long it'll be before we have access to more room. But, Father, we are so grateful for this room. So grateful for the, the innkeeper and the assistant innkeeper, all the staff, all the dear ones that work in this place from about 1.30, 2.30, to get this all prepared for us today for a few hours. We want to thank you, Lord, for what's been done. For what you're going to do. There's such a burden in my heart, such an operation, I cannot always discern everything you're speaking to me about, but I'm grateful for the work of the Holy Spirit. Lord, is it about healing or singing? We want to thank you for everything that thou send, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Wasn't that great? He has risen from the dead. Now, it was in my heart occasionally, and I was saying, it's in my heart, people say, why don't you keep quiet? But it's hard for me to keep quiet when it's in my heart. You see, if I were to keep quiet when it's in my heart, I'd lose it. And that's why many people do not have the witness of the Holy Spirit. That's why many people do not have the witness of the Holy Spirit in their heart, is because the devil tells them to keep quiet. You're foolish, you're silly, you keep still, don't say anything. But when it's in the flesh, it's not good. But if it's in the spirit, it's edifying. And uh, when it witnesses in my heart, you'll hear me say, in my heart. It operates within me. Brother Morgan, my precious brother, has been my friend now for over 25 years. We spent time with him and his wife in their church not quite 25 years ago. And they said, oh, we have a hymn here that why we've forgotten to play it for you these many days we don't understand but it's entitled it's in my heart <laughs> so they started it and uh, he probably remembers i know dorothy usually always recall how blessed i was as they played that record it is in my heart it's in my heart when it's in your heart oh this i think is one of the great privileges to man is to have this precious indwelling of Jesus. We're undeserving of it. We really are. And so when a person is childlike, uh, they're just like a child. And that's what we're to become. We're not to become great and know so much and be so much. He's called us to become like little children. And that's a big assignment. Just to become like a little child. That's what Jesus wants his people. I think many people will miss the kingdom of God in this earth. And our churches like trying to become something, somebody. So the only assignment is to become nothing, just to become like a little child. You can only be taught this. You can only learn this. It may take a half a lifetime to ever get this message any ways near the heart. The Bible said, and they considered not the miracle of the loaves and the fishes because their heart was hardened. That was the apostles that were with Jesus. Now, if they were prone to have their hearts hardened right in the presence of God, the Son of God, the blessed one, how easy it is for your heart to be hardened in a world of deceitful lust and iniquity, in a place of disobedience and neglect and darkness and selfishness, rebellion and stiff-neckedness, and far away from God. It's easy for your heart to be hardened. In fact, if you were to take a walk uh, down to the core of your heart, it may be astonishing to you to see how hard your heart really is. Unless it's very broken in him. It must be broken must be broken in me and you in order that Jesus have the preeminence. Wonderful. He is risen from the dead. <laughs> oh, that blessed me. I was so blessed in Jerusalem as they were singing it that I didn't get over it. And while again, and I said, what do you want? And he said, singing. I thought perhaps it was testimony or preaching or maybe more prayer or praise or adoration or healing while well, he witnessed singing. We didn't arrange that. If we could simply follow what the Lord would have us to do, not what we want to do. It required about 33 years of following Jesus before I really began to be taught about how Jesus wanted the meetings to be, and I'm still learning them only in the beginning. And it required 33 years for me to learn in my heart by the witness whether he wanted scripture first or spatial songs or congregation it'll be but God's grace will ever know again just by his mercy you see 
It, it's the gift of God. It's not anything of any of us. It's from Him. And it only may be for one person here. Now, while she was singing a while ago, it may be for just only one or two persons. But you see, Jesus will do all for one. You know, most people want to know that there's something involved before they do it. Like one day the Lord sent me to a jail to pray. I went to a courtroom, and I heard this judge pass sentence on this man. The gentleman had a wife and three, four children, and when he would go into homes delivering bread, he would take things that didn't belong to him, a watch or money. So they arrested him, and there he was tried, and I heard him sentence him, and he said, he said, sir, he said, I wanted to pardon you. You have a lovely wife and children. But he said, you have forced me to send you because you didn't tell me the truth. If you'd have told me the truth, I'd have suspended it. I wanted to. But you didn't come clear with me. And so he had to send him. At the close of the court session, I spoke with the judge of the court, and I told him that I wanted to go to the jail in our prayer. And he said, well, I'd be glad if you would. So I made my way to the jail. I um, talked with the sheriff's wife. The sheriff had just left before my arrival. I um, talked with a few of the family that were there that were relatives of the men in the jail. And after quite a long while, the uh, sheriff's wife said, you know, last Saturday there was a group, uh, there was two uh, ministers team for a jail service here. And they wanted to pray and sing and preach to our convicts. And so they asked how many of us, how many convicts there were. And my husband and myself related to them, we had one prisoner. And they said, only one? Well, then we'll come back some other day when you have a few more. And right then, that one prisoner wanted prayer so badly, he was waiting. So I was there, went in, and he knelt down with me and asked Jesus to forgive him of his sin. And when, when he gave his heart to Jesus, and I came to and looked at him, there was this little boy that was covered with sores, covered with sores. His mother had asked me some days before to pray for him. The Lord said, I couldn't pray for that little boy with sores just a few days before. But when his father repented back of those bars and gave his heart to Jesus, just to open my eyes and saw the little one, the Holy Ghost said, you may pray for the little one now. So he, his father was saved behind bars, and the little boy was healed behind bars. You see... Whenever you ask the man of God, always say the Lord willing will do this or that. Don't ask him. Don't say this is what we want. Just like here. Always be sure that what you're about to say is in divine order. It may not be in order at all. It may seem very urgent. But just wait until God leads you. Because it'll sidetrack us a little. Take me a while to get back on the track, the trail. Do the God's grace we can. Most all of our people have a little resentment or a little criticism. A uh, little rebellion, little irritations, and that's why we're not in one accord in the church. That's one reason, besides neglect and disobedience. Most everyone has a little talk about somebody, finding fault. They want to find fault, and that is keeping the church from one accordance and letting the world go to hell. And you and I have got to have a pure heart and a clean heart together in him that the kingdom of God may come on earth as it is in heaven. Because if there's one little thing that changes in your heart to find fault with anybody, it doesn't make me who it is or what it is. God taught me in 1942 that I must not have that in my heart whatsoever. Or I could not be led of him. And if you want to check on me, you can check on my wife and my children. They'll tell you whether that's been true in our daily life. You see, whatever is true in your daily life is evidence of your walk with Jesus. If it isn't at home, then it isn't anywhere must be at home first with your own companion, your own children, your own pet. And the Lord doesn't want any fault-finding spirit in me or you. If it is, it's not a deed of Christ. It's a carnality of the devil. And it's likely to be in everyone unless we're cleansed moment by moment and second by second. Because if once you are cleansed, that spirit will try to re-enter you every available second that you breathe. Now, see, this, you would have to hear this 200 times straight to hear it. You would have to hear this 200 times straight to actually hear it in your heart. 
the three dozen people in this company of five, six, five hundred here that can hear it within seconds. He tells me. He tells me there's 36 people in this room that can hear it in seconds. The rest of it take from one to two hundred times hearing it over and over and over and over to get that in your heart. Can you hear me? Are you able to hear me? Are you sure? Chief Fry, one of my close brothers, in fact, he was near death in 1952. I had such a burden for him, great burden, and I made my way to his place. And it seemed to me, and it was true, that the angel of death was right there to take him to heaven. He was awfully close. The doctor didn't think there was anything wrong, but when they put the instrument on him and found that that blood clot was in his heart, medical science says a man can't live like that, but he was alive with a blood clot in his heart. And he thought he was going to die any second. He said, Eloise, don't let him lift his hands. Don't let him do anything. Look at this. And we pled with God that God would stir him to be a righteous man to live to help us in the kingdom of God. See, that was my plea, and I prayed to God in the name of Jesus with earnestness, with all that was within me. And finally, he heard my cry, and he spared him. That was in 52, just a short while before his death. I went to pray with him. This wasn't too long ago. About a year, year and a half, I think. He was in the hospital in Mobilesville, Indiana. I went over to talk to him, and he said, Brother, you'll never know how thankful I am that Jesus sent you across my path. He told me this many times. I said, I'm in debt to Jesus for the guidance of the Holy Spirit, because if the Lord hadn't led me in 1938 to 41, I would have missed him. I wouldn't have found him as the people we found there. And then for the background of years, Preceding that, over a decade of being where I was supposed to be, or I'd have missed him. And while we talked together, he said, you know, the night that Barbara and Larry Morgan were married, April the 2nd, that was just months before that, and I said, yes, I remember well. He said, you know, you were exhorting, I was exhorting the aisles. I was pleading with many of you people, and many others, that they would go all the way with God and be everything God wanted them to be. Be true to God. And to die out of self and all this thing within us, all this critical spirit, fault-finding spirit, this hidden deceit and wickedness and pride, I was pleading and crying for men to obey God. I was in the aisles crying. And he told me, he said, I want to tell you, this is just before he's dead. He said, God revealed to me I was to get on my feet and cry out, you're not hearing him. You're not hearing the message. You're not getting it. You're not hearing the message. He said to me then, he said, you know, for 20 to 21 years you told me, I would be with you preaching and exhorting, and I'd hear you say, did you hear it? I said, yeah, I hear it. I hear it. That's what he told me. He said, I hear it. He said, I thought I heard you for 21 years. And he said, I found out after 20, 21 years, I was with you in all kinds of meetings. Sometimes the prayers would last. We'd be on our knees one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, five hours or longer. He said, I thought you, I heard you, but he said, after 20 to 21 years, he said, I found out I didn't hear. That's what he told me just before he's dead. And he was a man of vision. He said, I found after 21 years of being with you, I wasn't hearing you. I didn't hear everything I was supposed to hear. I simply share that with you to let you know that we've got to press constantly or we'll miss what the Savior wants us to hear. He will hear what we want to hear. See, most people in church hear what they want to hear. They don't hear what's good for them. Because if we hear the truth, it will crucify us. It will slay us. It will put us on our faith to get all these little weaknesses out of us so God can work through us his will to do in earth as it is in heaven. And so there is a place in God where we simply say, no longer my will, but thy will be done. Thy will. And this is urgent. People have been in the church for years and years. And I've been in the church all my life, 59 years. And yet, dear ones, we go, we sing, we preach, we testify, we pray, we witness, and how many of us are really all together inwardly for Jesus Christ alone? And this is what God wants in you and in me, is to be all for him, you see. And of course, I'm crying that the hour is late. Jesus is soon coming. The time of his approach is at hand. 
And not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. And they'll say in that day, Lord, Lord, did not we cast out devils in thy name? We've done miracles. We've, ca- we've done all these wondrous works in thy name. And he'll say, Depart from me, ye work is iniquity. I never knew you. The doing the signs and all the signs and the miracles, that's not the evidence. Listen, there can be demons cast out. There can be all kinds of signs and miracles, and Jesus is not leading it. He said so. The only way you can tell whether Jesus Christ is leading it is whether or not his love, the love, the agape love is there and the Holy Ghost witnesses, I am in this thing. I am leading. You can only discern by the witness of the Holy Ghost and John Wesley preached more on the witness of the Holy Spirit that he did most all of the doctrines of the church. That's the only way you can tell. You can't tell by the signs. You can't tell by the great miracles. People can be healed and fall to the floor and God's not in it. Unless the Holy Ghost witnesses, he's in it. You have all kinds of things going on, and it looks religious, it looks beautiful, it looks tremendous, but unless the Holy Ghost witnesses and the agape love is in the stream of it. And Jesus said, not everyone that says, Lord, Lord. So you see, we are nothing, none of us, but we want to be sure we're in divine order at all times. Say only the things that God wants us to say. Do only the things, and say the things, and do what he would have us, as you would see his direction clear. Praise the Lord. I didn't know I was going to get to exhorting and preaching here. It's an old story. It's an old story, but we've got to have it. And everyone that's close to God here is all broken up now, and he's happy as a lark and a meadow, fish and a stream, and children to play. The people that needed this are the people that said, I still wish we had something else going on. This took the temperature. Every one of you that like to have something else going on, you need this so bad that if you could measure on a scale as you could go to the limit, and almost break the springs of it. You know, if you go to a physician, you want him to tell you the truth. He don't want him to tell you, and oh, you're fine, just keep taking on, you're doing well. But he knows that cancer's die is right there growing in your body. And just kind of pats you on the back. We need to come to the very basic fact of spiritual cancers. And recognize them. And what our heart has the slightest bit the slightest tinge of warning entertainment more than the truth, then you're on dangerous ground. Because I want to tell you, when your heart cries with God, you'd rather have gospel preaching or gospel truth or the truth of Jesus Christ or the things of self-denial and the work of the Holy Ghost and the purity of Jesus and the wondrous works of the kingdom and the cross than most anything in the world. Lamar Wright said to me some years ago, he said, you know, I was in a meeting. He said they were singing, and he said the music was beautiful, and he said the people shouted the aisles and became so happy. He said, it's time to preach, so I got to give them the word, and they went to sleep. He said, there's something matter. I could say, there's something wrong here. I said, really? Yeah, he said, there's something wrong. He said, the music was nice, but he said, now's the time to shout while the word is going out. <laughs> You see, when the message comes, when the message comes, if it's in the spirit, you see, the carnal nature is so sweet. Awake now that sleep it. It's time to rise from the dead. Amen. The church, the organized church, we're asleep. We're asleep. We're at ease in Zion. Or there's a few in every church that's awake, that waits upon God, that obeys every leading of the Holy Spirit. Because if we fail to obey the leading of the Holy Spirit, we're spiritually slumbering. Disobedience, and disobedience is sin. Uh, no sin can enter there. Somebody said, well, nobody can take us out of the hands of Jesus. This is true. Nobody can pluck us out of his hand, but we get out of his hand by having our own way. We take the road out of his hand by letting self make the choice, self arrange it. That's the way we get out of the hands of God, is by letting self of us arrange it, pattern it, the desire. That takes us out as long as he is first. There's nothing that can separate us from his love. But he must defer. He said, the man's going to follow me, let him deny himself and take up his cross. He said, there isn't any other way. But oh, what a joyous way. Oh, what a delight. What a great and wonderful adventure. He tells me adventure. A great adventure in this walk of inner denial and doing God's will. Obeying him explicitly, continuously, not spasmodically, not occasionally, but always doing God's will from morning till night. 
God doesn't want me to stop one time. He wants me to be faithful. He me to look for my wife, my children, my friends, my neighbors, or strangers. He wants me faithful to him. I'll tell you, that's enough. That's enough to give a, a Christian high blood pressure of the soul. Saying, I tell you, I'm glad. I'm not telling you what you're doing. Well, we don't want to be more excited about that truth than basketball and football fans are about the touchdown. Maybe one of us, how Ohio State is able to overcome Michigan. Or vice versa. Well, bless your heart. Praise the Lord. If we put Jesus Christ first and you're living for him, it is, a, it is such a romance that you don't want it to end. And I have so little. I do. I have so little of his precious, wondrous love and grace from above. Amen. Well, we're just in a little humble meeting here. My wife told me 25 years ago, you preach a while, and then you wait a while, and you sing a while, and you exhort a while, and then you teach a while, and then you listen a while, and then God reveals something a while. Most of my work has been just waiting on the Lord. I'm not trying to find out anything. I don't try to find out things. So many people want to find out things. They're not willing to trust. Most people want to find out something. They want to know this or that. They're not willing to really trust. I mean, keep on trusting. You say, but it's hard on me. Yes, it'll slay you. He wants us completely yielded to the place where we trust him and not seek only trust his kingdom and let it go on. You say, well, we don't know which way to go. We'll just go where you are until he makes the way clear. He wants the people to go trust it. Really trust it. After I walk with God for... 30 years, I began to find out that very few people know what trust is. Yes, teaching. People teaching and preaching and working. And yet, we work it out ourselves. We don't know very much about what real trust is. We're asleep. We're asleep. The powers of the air put us to sleep. Really. The powers of the air have us almost in slumberland. Really. It's alarming. These God's heart seldom ever had a prophet that the people would hear since the fall of the Garden of Eden. God has never been able seldom to ever get any prophet that could awaken and stir up the people. Just get a handful, just a few. See, here's a man who studied the Bible and he knows this is true. Here's a brother with him who studied the Bible and these men have preached for 30 years, one of them 20 some years, another 30 some years, and they found this true. But there's so few people so few prophets of God through the ages that the people would actually hear. They just say, well, that's, a, that's something, isn't it? That's interesting. Or maybe they wouldn't say anything and say, actually, we should get somebody around here and need something. <laughs> we need something new. Bless your heart, we don't need anything new. We need to get the old, and when it becomes new within us, it'll be ever new and never wear out. <laughs> Now, Jesus, we've been praying and exhorting and in a song. We had a couple songs before. What is you want us to do now? Lord, what is it that you want us to do? Do you want a congregation singing? Uh, it's the Black Hymn Book. The Black Hymn Book. I don't know what song it is, it is any more than you do. <laughs> that is very much, is it? I don't know page one or the last page. I don't know whether it's a new song or an old song, one you know or never knew. I won't know the, the Holy Spirit keeps fit to, to tell me, and I don't know where it is. Yes, Father, thank you for the Holy Spirit that can tell us what to do. I said, I went through here and I knew it was in the area of 300, 340. So I started back and I counted from 300 up and when I got to 320, he said in my heart, but the witness of the Holy Ghost, that it is him number 320. Now I don't know what 320 is, but more than you do. I don't know how the tune is. 
But it says, Teach me, O God, teach me, my God and King, and all things thee to see. And what I do in anything, do it as to thee. That just sounds about like it was up to date here, and we were preaching about that. But well, isn't that amazing? That's what we've been preaching. And he said, I didn't know where it was, but he told me three times. I don't know this song, but it says, To scorn, to set to sway, while still to thee I tend. In all I do, be thou the way, and all be thou to the end. And now that's what we've been preaching on consistency. I'm not to be a scorner, not to be a, a leaner. And it says, all may I be protected. That means it's for everybody. All may live a life of holiness and purity and obedience. Nothing so small can be. It means that he takes everything. It doesn't, take, it doesn't make any difference how small it is. He's got it in his plan. He includes all. Don't make it, somebody said, I'm so little, I love it. Listen, you're in his plan. You've got the whole city. You've got a little place for you. It says that. But draw to an act for thy sake. But draw, no, isn't that marvelous? All may have been perfect. Nothing so small can be. But draw to an act for thy sake. Greatness and worth from thee. Oh, he takes the little, what seems to be in the news. Oh, he makes it great. He makes it beautiful. It's like a sunrise. It looks like only just a small as a snowflake in a man's heart. A woman that thinks she can't pray. A man that thinks he cannot say a word for God. He takes that little small nothing. And if she and he will yield themselves, God takes it and makes it great. Praise the Lord. Oh, yes, if he could. You see, the people supposed to do it won't. And the people that ought to be quiet will. Are you keeping up with me? Where are you? Now see this hymn, we didn't choose, we didn't make the choice of this hymn. I don't know this hymn. You see, most meetings are, are operated by what we like and what seems feasible and reasonable. This meeting hasn't had we just trusted the Holy Spirit for guidance. Somebody has something wrong right in the stomach right there. Be thou whole in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Jesus, the Christ of God, healeth thee. Jesus, the Christ of God, healeth thee. Sister, Jesus, healeth thee. Behold, be healed. Someone was healed right through this area. Right through this area. Right through this area. Right over here. Right here. Right back through here. Right 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 through there. 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 Right through here, right in there. Isn't that wonderful? I was enjoying all this, and he said, wait just a minute. Somebody's got something wrong with him. Oh, yes, it's right there. He just told me. I get happy about the way. I get excited. He just touched your body, made you whole. Take this infection, take this disease, this growth. Growth. Die in the name of Jesus of Nazareth for the glory of God. In the midst of exhorting about that we knew not the way, but he's giving us, he healed somebody. Listen, you can't program God. We can't program him, and you cannot program joy. If you let Jesus have his way, he has so many marvelous surprises for you. For all of us. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? We're exhorting on that third stance that Jesus tells me real soon. Uh, that there's something great need in the body of dear ones here. They needed help. But all this will not be in you. Behold, Jesus healed us and maketh thee well. Give him the praise and the glory. Give him the praise and the glory. Thank you, daughter. Give him the praise and the glory and the honor in heaven for what he's done for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, that was wonderful. That was in verse, stanza number three. Now stanza four. If done to obey thy laws, even to vile labors shine, hallowed is toil, if this the cause, the meanest work divine. Oh, so oh, what a stanza. Praise the Lord. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you this. There's so much in this, the kingdom of God in these hymns of Jesus' people. Be then my God and my King, in all things may I see, and what I do in anything, may it be done for thee. Not for man, not for any of us, not for the people, but for Christ, for God alone. 
Oh, how precious the way is. So this is the hymn. Let us stand as we sing together. Boys, right, we'll have to find out who is to lead the team. Mrs. Hall will be playing this through as we pray. I know we're crowded, so let's just keep it quiet as we can. Uh, we'll trust for this air. I don't know whether the air, we've got plenty of air in here or not. There's so many people here. I don't know how soon the next room will open. But we'll trust for more room shortly. Ms. Helm, you keep playing, will you please? Please let the tin get in your heart. Please, please. How many people know this hymn real well? Would you lift your hand? Please lift the hand, each one of you that know this hymn. I don't see a hand raised. I don't see a hand raised in this house. There's four or five hundred people here, and there's not one person that knows this hymn. Oh, John, our John knows it. Just a little bit. He knows it slightly. But to see before his conversion, he didn't like the hymns. He didn't like the hymns at all. Do you know it? He didn't like the hymns. Is that right? No, uh, he didn't care for the hymns. In fact, he was against the church. He wanted to see it burn. And all Christians kind of come to an end. But that's people. He was that much against the church before his conversion. Now, by God's grace, he's been just as keenly run away, all for Jesus, all for God, and all for the church. Only one man here knows anything about this hymn, about singing it in the past. Now, my wife and I have gone through this hymn book, so we've gone over it some years ago, 30, we've been over this hymn 30 years ago, because we used to go through this hymn. Over 30 years ago, we went through the hymn. And we would think, isn't that great? Isn't that wonderful? 30 years ago, that's a little while, wasn't it? But I don't know the hymn because it's been 30 years since I saw it, probably, to really go through it, to really speak to you about it. All right. Now, dear John, you're the only one that knows the hymn, so you better come and try to lead it. Endeavor to lead it, may I say. Are you all? I, how many have really been encouraged to bless a little bit here? Well, there's a few people have been encouraged to bless. Now, uh, if there's very much carnality in your heart, a meeting like this will irritate you. But if you're committed to the Lord, why, well, it may help you, may encourage you, to some extent or to a great extent. And we thank God for this. It's because of him, not because any of us here. Just being an instrument in the hands of Jesus. All right, hymn number 320 in the black, in the book, the dark hymn book. Good job trying, I'll tell you. But there's so much in that we can't quite hear it all. So we might think that's passed over. I say, Jesus, help me. Oh, grant that I'll just be able to perceive this little simple thing in my heart, this simple truth in my soul. Amen. Help me to try to swing in to get in tune with this. Thank you very much, son. You did well. First, 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 first. Very good. The first stanza again. First stanza again, please. <laughs>
figure that. And what I do in anything, do it. That's for thee. Alone for Jesus Christ. Not for the peoples of the world. Alone, but for Jesus. That's for thee. When you do it for Jesus and as for him, I'll tell you all the people that's in Blessing District will get it. Plenty of it. Whenever you do it all for him, for Christ, all the people who taught us will get a little bit of it. Praise the Lord. All right, we'll sing a second stanza, if you please. Thank you very much. this way. Now the sense of touch, of hearing, now there'll be a lot of things that you'll, you'll have to watch your hearing, what you want to hear. To score the senses way. You see, our senses sway us from the road. It takes over. We don't hear what we ought to hear. We do not get what we need to get. We're not moving where we ought to be. The senses within us sway us from the way. They get us out of the way. That's why the human race has failed God most of the time. And this writer saw it there. He said to scorn the senses sway. To scorn the senses sway. That which sways us away. Turns us out of the way. Takes us out in our own path. Takes us out in our own eyes and deals and desires. Amen. Beloved, I want you to know, beloved, today that the powers of hell are raging to try to get us to be swayed from what God wants us to be and do. It says here to scorn the senses sway. It'll sway us away. Sway us out. Out of order. Get us to talk too much. Get us to see. Let me tell you something. If you've got the slightest tendency in you to see the fault of anybody, that thing is about to destroy you. And most people have this. So oh, don't look for the weaknesses of man. Look for the beauty of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus Christ. It says the senses. To scorn the senses sway. Oh, my friend, we'll swear from the way Amen. if we're not all for God. Amen. I'm pleading with you to put Jesus Christ first and to die out real good. Amen. Oh, we'll be so attached to this earth, so pull down here that we'll be like other men. We'll be like the lost sheep. God wants us like lights Amen. in a darkened world. The senses will sway us from the lights of darkness. The senses will sway us from victory to defeat. From darkness and soul burden. Take us away from it. And the tourists, it'll be tourists from the will of the Most High God. The senses will sway us from the will of the mighty God of ages. This has been my cry for 30 some years. He's to be faithful to God morning to night. Oh, that hymn there. How could I be quiet when you were singing that? How could I? How could I stay there when you were thinking that? Why to store the senses way? Oh, we're to despise these right. senses within us that would get us from the way right. and turn us out of the path. Right. Well, it's wonderful, isn't it? God said, you see, we didn't know 320. He said 320. Nobody knew it here but one man. He knew it a little. We're in the second stanza. <laughs> while still to thee I tend. Get that? To scorn the senses sway while still to thee I tend. I, I want to. Oh, I want to do better. Why oh, intend? Let me tell you, intention is good, but I tell you, if we don't go all the way with God, he says, don't mean anything. Unless we have God all together and put in for We can intend to do God's will, but do our own. We can intend to do God's will, but do our own. You still love me now? Yeah. When all I do, be thou the way. <laughs> you want that this? In other words, we're to follow him so that all we're doing will be as he guides. When all I do, be thou the way. You see, if it's going to be that way, I must guide me in my conversation, my attitudes, my motives, my way, my destinies. My thoughts, my aspirations, he must guide. 
and all be thou the end. Well, that means I'm laying aside every weight and sin. I'm laying away aside every situation that would tend to bring me status among men. Thou be the end. Thou be my all. Oh, thou Christ. Oh, I need more than I have so little. I tell my family I have so little of him. I know you feel the same way. But Jesus said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God, and blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Well, that makes stanza. May the Lord help us to understand. May the Lord encourage you. Did this exhortation help you in it? Yes. It might have been worth your trip here. Yes. A few times or many times. Or more than that. He said more than that. God tells me it's worth your trip more than that. And many times, you know, if you could just get that, our senses will get us to sway from the way. See, the, what we see and what we hear what we smell, what we touch, will take us and sidetrack us and put us on the siding. That's why most people are on the siding, not on the main line. That's why it's the same thing over and over and over and it's no drum. Oh, I'm sad and such a hard time. My, my, why don't something happen? Well, on the siding, it's the same thing. You get on the siding, you see the same sights all the time. Go on the main line, it's a, it's a variation of scenery all the time. These senses will get us on the siding and life will be drab and dark. But I'll tell you, if you're on the main line, you're having a surprise just every corner or two. <laughs> every bend <laughs> along this straight path. Straight and narrow. Well, praise the Lord. Thank you. We're going to try to sing. That's number three, if you please, then, John. Thank you for helping me. My, what a hymn. What a song. song we did not know. You see, most programs would have had the songs they know. See, God, when he has a program, you get songs you don't know, never knew, and don't know anything about them, but they've got so much in them that God wants it for that hour. Now, this hymn is for this moment. This hymn is for this moment. Isn't that crazy? Amen. Certainly is. Praise the Lord. Amen. So great that he can tell us hymn number 320. Uh, some of you precious young people that are strong, if you want to change seats like Reverend Good and... Uh, 
some of the ladies and other men there that are older that are getting tired, well, you may just, uh, if, if you're real strong, you young people, you may trade with someone for a little while. Thank you very much for your cooperation. When you see someone get up, just come take a seat. You older ones, it's tired. This place is the Lord. Just come right on. And if you younger people don't feel well, come and sit down when the seat's open. Just come right ahead. We're asking for the people to make themselves comfortable, and may the young people that are standing, just stand somewhere, be seated on the floor, if you like. And if you uh, don't have room back there, some young people come up and sit on the altar. Be fine. So if somebody needs to be saved or sanctified or reclaimed or filled or blessed or healed. That he would tell us 320. 320. Now you see, we're having a great time over this. Amen. We're having a great time. You take a little child, he's become a child, he has a great time with nothing. And he's happy over a little something. Somebody said, Brother Helm, why are you so delighted over this hymn? Because the Holy Spirit witnessed it's 320. And there's been so much in it. Been so much in it. I oh, just can't uh, quite tell it all. Just a little here is a lot. Uh, I would that we were more excited over this. Yeah, praise the Lord. This is true. Yeah. Uh, Mary, do we get excited when you and Dick are with us over little things? Get up and tell the folks. They may think this doesn't work at home. All kinds of little things. But you know nothing's little with God anyhow. Oh, true. And I'm so thankful. True. So thankful for all the little things God does because if we're thankful for the little things, they become big in our heart. Yeah. And Brother Ham is the most thankful man I know. <laughs> He's the most grateful for every little thing and there isn't anything that misses his attention. Good, oh, bad, no, no, little, no, 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 no. or... Small or big. <laughs> but it's true. By God's grace. By God's grace. Amen. Well, that's the precious, Mary. You see, Dick and Mary have been with us in so many places. And uh, you see, whoever's with you finds out what kind of person you are. So you're really thankful over little things. You see, some people don't get excited unless they see celebrities. Right. Unless they get million-dollar gifts. They get excited with that. Listen, we're to be excited with what seems to be so Amen. little to the world, but it's so great with God. Yeah. <laughs> the fact that he tell us him number 320. Just wonderful, isn't it, William? Did you get encouraged over that? Isn't that precious? So great. Hallelujah. So glad, Ernest. Amen. What a hymn God gave us here. Praise the Lord. It, when you said it encouraged you, it encourages me. <laughs> see, as I look over at this precious brothers here with me, and see, I pray about what God wants. I, I don't know from now on what to do, only just trust But when I prayed, and I mentioned this brothers, how it encouraged him, then it helped me. It flew right over into my heart. And what I said is, back in my heart. <laughs> yes. Oh, I'm sure thanks. Praise the Lord. Thank you. You just asked, you know, and yeah. that's what I did, and it really helped. It got in there. Amen. It helped you? Yes, it did. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. I'm thankful. Yeah. That's right. We don't know what that will do for you in the next few days. I'll trust you. Right. Yeah. Nothing will do a lot. That will may do something for you and me when we get home. Yeah. Yeah. We help all the time. Yeah, all the time. There might be some yeah. hills of difficulty or valleys or through some tests. Maybe just a little here will carry us through there. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I have to all my heart. Amen. Now, that kind of touched me a little when you said that. <laughs> yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. See, Jesus, Jesus takes time to all of us. Yes. 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 So unworthy, but he died. Yes. He loved me, even me. Yes, sir. You're precious to him. Hallelujah. You're precious to him, Ernie. I'm just so unworthy. I just feel that way too. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I don't know you ever felt like nothing, but that's what I feel like. Hallelujah. He said, I don't know whether you feel like that, but he said, I just feel like nothing. But he's so happy. 
That's the victory. Without Jesus, I'd be most miserable. I'd be undone. I'd be lost and wandering far away. Amen. When I think about other dear friends or brothers that I've seen and the struggle, and I think it's only by the grace of God, it's not me. Amen. Right. So I'm thankful this morning for Jesus. He loved even me, sinners such as I, saved by grace. <laughs> I think that precious song that <coughs> says, please, the boy. And I, my hope was built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. And I dare not trust the sweetest praise, the holy lean on Jesus' name. Oh, my friends, this morning, how true that is. Yeah, yeah. And there's so many sweet refrains and things that we want to draw and cause us to get sidetracked, as we've heard this morning. Yeah. That we dare not listen, that we got to trust in Jesus. Yeah. Walk on. Yeah. Hallelujah. So I'm thankful this morning. Just want to praise him, rejoice in the Lord. Amen. I don't understand sometimes that I can cry easier than I can do anything else. Just praise the Lord. We need those tears. We need those tears. I'll never forget an experience once in my life. And I thought after I'd become a Christian, well, that isn't good for a man to be weeping. And, you know, the Lord took it away for just a spell. And I just thought, see, what did he give it back? <laughs> Oh, yeah. I was miserable. Yes. And I couldn't wait for Jesus. Amen. Oh, yes. Praise the Lord. He was miserable when his tears were taken. But when the tears came back, oh, he had that sweet joy again. Yeah. Oh, the devil can fight a man over weeping. Saying men shouldn't weep. They ought to be strong. True. But I want to tell you, weeping is not any sign of weakness. No. Weeping can be a sign of brokenness, yieldedness, and right. appreciation. The enemy will sure make you think it's a weakness, I'll tell you. Yeah, he does that. But I'm thankful this morning for Jesus. And I'm thankful for the brothers and sisters in Christ that are here that I know personally, and even for those that I don't know, but if, you're, if you belong to Jesus, you're a brother or sister of mine, and I just rejoice. Hallelujah. And I think these young people here are so precious this morning. Amen. I just rejoice when I see young people out to serve Jesus. Amen. I'm so thankful for my own family, for two sons and two daughters. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. They love Jesus, right? I know. It just, it, just, it just blesses my soul. <laughs> feel like I'd like to shout and can't. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'll tell you what a privilege a man has. To walk with God, and as you were sharing there this morning, and, and thought to me, well, even out in the pasture fields, you can have a good time with Jesus. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter where you're at. That's true. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's right. Well, I'm thankful that, for the privilege of walking and talking with Jesus. I'll tell you, the way would be lonely, it'd be drear, it'd be miserable, but I'm so thankful whether I'm going down the road or whether I'm out in the field or whether I'm in a combine or where I'm at. That I can have fellowship with my master. I'm not worthy of it, but I can. I didn't think I had anything to say, but praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't have anything to say. The Lord says it. Yeah. yeah. I thought when I come in, and Brother Kenny said you're supposed to be on the platform, and I thought, no, not me. I'm not even worthy to have my feet wiped on. The Lord told me this morning early he would be up here with us. I prayed about it. I said, Lord, where are they? So I just started out to find who they were. Found them just like I did 320. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just had to tell the Lord, well, Lord, I don't really have anything to say, but if there's anything that you want me to say, I want to say it. So I trust that all that's been said of for his honor and his glory yeah, alone. Yeah, Jesus. No one else but him. He's yeah, the only one. For Jesus' sake. Yeah. I just love him this morning and praise him because he loved me. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
Well, how many get blessed for the Lord? <laughs> Encouraged for the Lord. About three or four hundred get blessed for the Lord. <laughs> His son, Frank, told me something in Michigan when I was up there, Muskegon, not quite two years ago, the two years this October. His son, Frank, is seated here in the front row, was with us in Israel on our fifth to sixth trip. I can't remember which one it was. But it was the time we had to land in Bangor, Maine, and God sent Frank up to, to witness to the co-pilot. I spent a little 10 hours with the co-pilot six, seven weeks after that in Bermuda. And he, was, he needed Frank. If he ever needed, anybody needed Frank that day. He'd just been saved in a Roman Catholic church, gave his heart to Jesus in Rome just hours before Frank found him up there in Bangor, Maine, when our plane wouldn't go forward. Engine one was reversed. Well, Frank told me while we were talking in Muskegon two years ago this October, he said, well, you know, when you stayed with Granddaddy, that's Ernest's father. His father's name is Sam. We've been close friends now for 20-some years, since 1951 or two. That's when I had that only carbuckle I'd ever had. He helped me, you know, yeah. through there. One of the cords came out of your daddy's place. And uh, we shared with him the kingdom of God. And Frank, your son, told me what encouraged your grandfather was. Helped me very much. He said, Frank, he said, what I read in this book, a voice in the wilderness is verbatim, nearly verbatim to the word what he told me just in conversation back in 51 or 2. Praise the Lord. Is that right, Frank? Yes, sir. That's right. That's what God earnest his thoughts. See, I haven't been with Sam now for... I judge I've been with him once in 15 to 20 years, but what touched him was the things that we told him then were not changed in the book. <laughs> Same stories we gave him there, extemporaneously or still, and it's in print, almost verbatim as we gave him, because of the Holy Spirit, because of Jesus. And Jesus wants us to live consistent lives and share everything alike, not to make it a little more, to impress somebody. Never wants us to tell anything bigger than it is. Always, always just make it as it is. Never any more than it is. Always be sure about not to exaggerate. Because the natural tendency, I think, of man is to try to impress people. I think it's the natural tendency that we have to impress people. And this grieves the Holy Spirit for us to try to impress. We must live for Jesus and just give it as it is. Share it as it is. And love everyone just alike. Love everyone in all the world just alike. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Isn't it wonderful? Yes. Why, it truly is. Now, Jesus, I don't know it's what you would have us to do, whether it's scripture, spatial songs, Congregational preaching, healing, testimony offering, now since Revelation prayer. Now as I go through this list of possibilities, the Holy Spirit operates with me on spatial song. Spatial song. Now here's a list of most some people that sing here. Just let me look up. That's just a part of the people that sing here. My brother Edward, is the choir director out near Washington, D.C., he said to me the other day, he said, it is marvelous the talent that God has gathered together in this group. He said, it's a marvelous thing. And I said, it surely is, because see, we have all of you because of God's guidance of 30 to 40 years. This little, this precious one is here because God's guidance led me to this one over here that got a hold of them. This little group are here because God guided us in 38 to 41. And all the people that are here today because I met Robert Morgan back in 1950 and God worked through him to open doors over the United States and I would say about, let's find out, about 40 to 45 percent of the people here are here because of that guidance when we met you. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Because we were together and God led us together and you believed that we were an unworthy servant of Jesus. 
Come right up here, brother. Amen. You know, uh, Robert, uh, it's so precious. Our fellowship to Jesus has been for 25 years. And uh, when Jesus gave me one of the biggest assignments along the line of precious sacred revelation when he revealed to me who his companion was, I never heard tell of it, only in the case of Abraham when he sent his servant down in Mesopotamia to the land of Merah to find Isaac a companion. A wife. Never heard tell of it. But God helped me to find by the Holy Ghost his companion. Yeah, and you told me wonderful. shortly after, it said if you'd have looked over yeah, the nation, right. the world, that's true, brother. couldn't have found another one. Right. I marveled. I didn't he know marveled. I, I didn't know one existed that perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that was perfect with that's you. Right. You yeah, were helpful to each other, that's fit into everything. That's right. Have right. had, you know, many couples have been having adjustments for 10, that's 20, right. 30, 40, 40 years. And by God's grace, right. you haven't no, had any. No, 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 no adjustments. No, it's just like we're just spinning everything like that. I marvel. I just marvel. I never see. We try to thank Jesus about oh, everything. Oh, uh, it's been marvel. Isn't it is wonderful the romance oh, you've had? Right. right. It's and been church, church people that tell me resent me for it, that God would oh, tell yeah. me to tell you. Isn't that something? Yes, I had. Say, I'm I, happy. I, I don't know about that. <laughs> Now, you people don't like shouting. I never did like it either, but every once in a while it bounces out. I can't help. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I was always opposed to shouting. But when I got the victory, that's the kind I got. <laughs> and if you're opposed to it a bit, if you get the victory, you'll be shouting in most terms wherever God works. If you have the slightest inclination to be against it, that's what you'll become. Sure as I am in this pulpit, when you get the victory, you'll be shouting. Because I didn't like it. I just thought it'd be better to be quiet, <laughs> be dignified. But isn't that wonderful? Oh, that's wonderful. Someone the other day, a very wonderful person. I mean, a wonderful person. Says, Brother Helm, I'm so glad you were here with us today because I just kind of resented in my heart the fact that you told Brother Morgan oh. about his companion. Said, I thought any man could choose his own companion. Oh, I'm so glad Jesus chose he said, I'm sure glad you told me. <laughs> I said, Well, you see, I, I didn't really, it was the Holy Spirit that revealed it to me. Yeah, I didn't, excuse me, I didn't know that, brother, that she was right when I've told her since that now, if I could make the choice, you'd be the one I'd choose. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Could you hear what he said? He didn't know what choice to make then. And he was so shy and timid, it would take a long while for him to ever record it anyone. Right. You see, the Holy Ghost knew who she was, where she was. I looked over the states here and there early in the morning. And when I landed in Parisburg, Virginia, I'll tell you, he said, she's right here. Praise here she is. Lord. Right there. I found her like I did 320. Glory to God. Brother Holy Ghost. I tell you, that thrills me. That goes through my arm. I just think they're so happy. They're so thrilled. Oh, my. The other day when we were together, a few weeks ago, and you both were telling me how happy you'd been. I think then it's been uh, two years and about uh, two months nearly from the time you were married, and we just had such a wonderful time. Yeah. Rejoicing how yeah. Jesus blessed like that. Yeah. How he led like that. Yeah. Yeah. And these yeah. two years and some weeks, it doesn't seem long, does it? Oh, no, brother. It's been delightful. Praise the Lord. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. so thankful to Jesus for it. Oh, we're so grateful. Yeah. Yes, it was two years and a month. Now it's been two years, two months, and some days. Yeah. And Jesus blessed. Praise the Lord. Oh, we're grateful. Hallelujah. Yeah. But I, I have to marvel how church people over America oh, resent the fact that God told me who your companion was. Oh, I didn't realize that. Because we hadn't anything to do with it. No, I, you no. know what? I just loved you so much. Oh, I love you and love God. I said, oh, here he is, Jesus. Yeah, oh, so God, thankful. Holy Spirit, I don't Praise know. Lord. Lord, he needs a companion more than about anyone I know. He can't stay in a parsonage or a layman's home. When the man of the house leaves, he can't stay there. He's not free to be there. He's called. Lord, he needs a companion. Where is she? So he just led me to her. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And I still marvel that after we've been together five days, just uh, getting yes. acquainted, you right. witnessed the Lord witness that he'd done as much for us in 11 months. Mm -hmm. It would have taken us normally 11 months to do what Jesus did for us in five days. Isn't that wonderful? Wonderful. When he went over after the revelation, got a motel in Pierceburg, and when she was off work, and they would get together and go to dinner, as soon as they'd get home, I'd call him. Next night, I'd call him again, and before I knew it, while I was talking, the Holy Ghost started praying through me. And I asked God to send the power of the Holy Ghost and come and join them. And he said he felt the Holy Ghost come around both of them and just join them together. 
Right. That's oh. right. Tell these folk out here, they don't Praise quite understand that. That was marvelous. I can't explain that, but I could just feel dark while you were praying. I said, I rejoice in It's in my heart. The Lord. That's in my heart. That's so wonderful. He joined you right there yes. in the Holy Ghost. Yes. The second night you were together. Yes, I believe it was. What I marvel too about that. See, that's a miracle. Yes. Do you know some couples are still trying to be joined? Yes. Yes. You know, there's, there's many couples are still trying to be joined. The wife talks too much, the husband too little, and there's little, just a little friction. Oh, well, they don't tell anybody about it. They don't tell anyone. But, oh, they, they do wish they could make an adjustment. Can you hear me? He talks too much, he talks too little. And they'll both say, oh, I wish we could kind of get together. Wish we could understand better. One is fast, one is slow. Oh, we could get one to slow down, the other to speed up a little. Just make some adjustments. How God wants us to join us yeah. by the Holy Spirit. And he joined you by the Holy yeah. Ghost right there. Yeah. While we were talking, yeah. the Holy Spirit came in the yeah. prayer. Somebody says, why are you doing this? Or to help you out. Yeah. Yeah, he'll help everyone yeah. here. What we're in now will help you if you'll receive it. Yeah. Yeah. He'll help you. Well, it's helping me. Praise the Lord. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. You see, reviewing. Somebody yeah. says, why does Brother Helm review, review, review? Listen, God in the Word wants his children to review all the wonderful things he's done over and over and over and over. Yeah. And the more you review, when you review it 50 to 100 times, you get more out of it the 100 times than you did the second. Yeah. When the Holy Ghost is in it. Yeah. Now, if you do it just because it's an experience, see, a lot of people won't tell their experience. I sit there and there's no witness. But the revelation makes the difference. The revelation makes the difference. If the Holy Ghost is revealed, it, it's alive. It'll bless everyone that's blessable. Yeah. Yeah. If you have a revelation fresh from heaven and God leads you, that revelation will bless everybody that's blessable. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime he leads you. It, that's me a wonderful yeah. story. I'd sure like to tell the whole world the Lord made the right choice. Amen. So, so pray. Yes, brother. I, I tell you this, I marvel at this. And we reviewed this the last two weeks, I think. I'm still rejoicing and praising God and realizing that it was a big assignment for me. I said to my wife and son, I said, you get on the phone because I'm to share with this precious handmaid that she's to become the wife of Reverend Robert Morgan. It's not going to be an easy task for a little week seven like me because I'm going to have to have the right word, the right way. Yeah. It's got to be just so sweet. It's got to be just so timely. Yeah. It's got to be just exactly right, or it might be a little too harsh, or maybe it won't be strong enough or too strong. It's got to be just pinned with color and beauty and sunrise. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, it's a big assignment. Yeah. You see, some of us leap in there to try to do yeah. something, and we just knock it out before it begins. Yeah. Yeah. And so we needed wisdom. That's why I was so thankful you could do it, brother. Oh, I was so intent with Jesus for him doing it through us. Oh, I prayed, and he helped us. Barbara oh, told yeah. the other day, he really helped me oh, to share yeah. it with her. Yeah. Yeah. And what I'm marveling about all of it is that God told her three times yeah. before I knew it. Yeah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. He told her three times in less than three months that I was going to call her and tell her that she'd become the companion of the servant of God to my side here. Wonderful. Now that's enough to make all of you shout a little yeah. if there's any shout whatsoever in you. But God could tell me 550 yeah. miles from a handmaid yeah. and tell her three times before I knew it. Yeah. Praise God. Oh, I, I said to my wife, if we get all these wonderful revelations down and surely convince the gainsayers yeah. and the skeptics and the unbelievers yeah. that Jesus is Lord yeah. and that he leads and he makes the way, if only we'll give him the praise and the glory and yeah. the honor, he must have the praise. Someone yeah. says, this is a simple service, this childlike. That's the way we go with Jesus, this childlike. This childlike. It doesn't need to be complicated. No. Just simple, just lowly. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. I appreciate you, you being with us today. Privilege, yeah. my privilege. Thank you. Thank you. Now, we, you see, we got to thanking God for that while we were praying about who was to sing. See, the Lord has little extras in there, benefits. Every once in a while in the program, he puts a benefit. He loads us daily with what? Benefit.
Brother Shotzi, would you come and talk to Jesus or tell the people about how Jesus has been with you since we last were here? Uh, while they're getting ready to sing, just come right up here and talk to the people about Jesus, what he's on your heart. You've written us some wonderful letters, how Jesus is blessed. Hey, Amen. Just think this precious brother found Jesus in Germany long ago. And he said the first wedding he was here, how many weddings would that be? Five weddings ago or six? Oh, at least six. Six weightings ago. And uh, if I remember right, it took several sessions before you get tuned in with it. Yeah. You know, to come to well, one session and get tuned in with us, it's like trying to go to a ball game and uh, just be there two minutes for the first play and then go home and say, I had a, yeah. I had a great game. Well, I had to put my antennas up first. Oh, you had to get in. the antennas That was a problem, I think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See, he had to get his antennas up. The first time he came here, he had been a disciplined Christian in prayer and waiting before God, but he, he couldn't get his hands up. He couldn't get his antennas up. And it stirred him uh, quite a bit, didn't it? Yeah, I don't know. I didn't know why I had to do it. I could understand why all of you could do it. But the way I was raised, I didn't think I had to do it. I thought maybe I would be excused from it. Well, you so did. I, I wasn't going to do it, but the Holy Spirit kept making me feel more and more uncomfortable. And uh, like I shared with you earlier, that finally I put one arm up and uh, here began to flow, another arm went up and self was broken uh, a little more than I self and joy yeah. of the Lord came in. Yeah. Yeah. I think from that time on I, I was tuned in much better. Tuned in much better after that. And we had such a precious time Then uh, uh, this meeting was very much like the fellowship I'd experienced in Germany there. Um, the first experience that I had with the church was in a in a room, in a meeting room in a hotel behind the University of Hamburg. And um, the Holy Spirit was in charge of that meeting. You never know, knew when it would be over with. There was no bullets or anything like that, but the Holy Spirit was in control and our souls were fed. And after I left this meeting here, I, uh, I felt that uh, I lost something, but it wasn't very long when I discovered that the well was Jesus. Yeah. And this well was transferable. You can transport it, but you can take it along. Oh, yeah. So uh, sometimes people say, well, I, I just wish we had another waiting. Well, I don't feel that way about it. I, I feel wonderful to have a waiting because uh, I always learn new things. But I've discovered the well, uh, Jacob's well, could be taken along. Yes, sir. I take it with me to Nebraska. Yes, sir. And uh, I weep there and I rejoice almost every day. Yes, sir. And it's just as precious there because Jesus is the water of life. Amen. And uh, sometimes I just feel maybe it's too early for waiting because we're still digging on the old truth. That's right. Because many times people, you know, they want to have a new field, they want to have a new experience or something else, and they just, just like a farmer going across a field, a new field, and once he's walked over it, well, he'd be a fool to say, well, now I know all about this field. So he's going to have to start digging. Yes, sir. And uh, he'll get deeper and deeper, and he'll find all the little creatures in there. he find nuggets of gold in there, minerals and stones and everything else. And so sometimes I'm still digging. Yeah, we, we got a lot to on. dig in that yeah. field. So as we, I think it's important for us to, to listen to the tapes yeah. of the waitings. Yeah. The last tape that I listened to was the one on uh, coming to one accord. And uh, when I was at the last one-day waiting at Selma, Indiana, I didn't get the message. You heard I tried, you were there with me, but you were too tired. You could not hear. So um, then uh, when I got the tape, I listened to it for about 10 minutes, and I had to turn it off. And yes. I went out and I worked, worked in the garage for a while. Yes, sir. I just, uh, there was so much in it, and I knew I couldn't take it. I had to think and pray some more. Yes, sir. So uh, I'm still trying to catch up. Yes, Praise sir. the Lord. Praise the Lord. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> See, in that marvelous, he came 700 miles for one waiting, and the Lord helped us to start preaching in the sixth hour, and when we started to preach, Joe Bishop told me he thought in himself the meeting had began. Our brother was there for the meeting, but he couldn't hear the sermon, and he's dedicated, he's, he's prayed, he's trusted, he's pressed to get there. You'd think that uh, coming 700 miles, that requires a lot of love, a lot of care, a lot of devotion. But when he heard the message the first time, he didn't hear it. But isn't it marvelous that he learned that? Most of us don't know that. But uh, when you got to hear it on the tape the first time, you couldn't take but 10 minutes. Yeah. 
I had to shut it off. I had to turn it off and do something all together different. I think I was working out with a hammer and nails. You were while. eating, eating what, what you heard the ten mi ten minutes yeah. while you were working with hammers and nails and so forth. But I rejoice. Oh yeah. yeah. I have oh, a wonderful time with Jesus. Oh, it's in my heart, it's too. I can tell not, that this is no, the truth. It's the truth. Praise it's God, truth I can right. tell that it is true. It doesn't seem to make too much difference anymore what's going on the outside. That's right. Because uh, Jesus really is the the way, the truth, and the life. Yes, right. yes, Lord Jesus. we need to trust him with all our hearts, he'll supply all our needs according yes, to his riches. Yes, and his riches are much better than the riches of the world are. Yes, sir. Because it doesn't just, just, just give us what we need, but a little more extra all the time. Yes, better there. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sam, I'm sure thank you. Thank you. We're glad we got to see you. I don't know how to do this, but we'll work yeah. it out. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So great. Thanks. So great. Great. So thanks. Oh, we're so unworthy. So I'm so needy. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Sure appreciate you right. coming up. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Wasn't that precious? Yeah. I wish we could hear what he said. He said when he heard the message on May the 10th, he didn't hear it. There, he's too tired, too worn, wasn't able to hear it. And while we were endeavoring to preach it, the devil was telling me I didn't know much about it. People are too tired. They weren't going to hear you. The powers of the air were wrestling against us. And I felt we did very poorly. But when I called from Florida, son Johnny said, Dad, I think it's one of the most important messages. I said, really? 